guys, Rob Murphy from Least Securing Choices here. Now, today I'm going to talk about things I wish I knew before I started a health business. So, back at the start of 2013, after finishing my diploma in remedial massage, I decided to leave the retail world behind. Before that, I was just stacking shelves in a supermarket, had the opportunity to go away, earn a fair bit of money, came back and started my own business. So, done with those days. The long hours, customers, wanting stuff, all that sort of stuff, and average pay, and average, average pay. Now, I mean, it wasn't all bad. I met my beautiful fiance working there, so that was great. Now, I was primed to become the best and wealthiest massage therapist in the world, or at least my town. How wrong I was. Now, the first years of any business are more than likely going to be a struggle. So let's make that clear right from the get-go. You will struggle. Unless you're working into an established business or buying into an established business or whatever like that. So especially if you don't have anything else lined up on the horizon as well. Now I was lucky enough to, as I was getting going, get into group home sort of things, massaging disabled people. And that was great. That was a lifesaver for the business at that time. And also, depending on the area, you will be competing for business from well-established businesses and people who have been massaging for years and years or whatever else it is, so NLP, kinesiology, just even selling health drinks or something like that, Herbalife, that sort of stuff, you'll be going up against these established businesses. So what this means is that more than likely you'll be putting everything you earn, plus maybe a little bit more back into the business, depending on your location and how much it costs to set up in your overheads and all that sort of thing. Even if you're starting from home, you will need supplies, there will be bills to pay, association fees, other courses that you want to do, it all adds up. So the number one thing is to have a backup plan. Luckily for me, I did, and during that time too, I've started to diversify, so I'm not 100% reliant on the income just from the business like YouTube, for instance, like the courses I have. I do have another part-time job that I do as well. So think of your backup plan, some savings, a part-time job, just something to help you support your way through during that initial struggle, that initial setup of your business is a great, great help. And rolling right off that, you're going to have bad days. There are going to be days where people cancel. Maybe a whole heap of people cancel. I've had that where one after the other cancels. I mean, there was even a few bad months recently with a pandemic going on, which is great because I had that backup plan that I was talking about to go away, keep earning money, so I could keep the business not going as such, but come back to it at a later stage. You will feel lousy probable that you won't feel incredibly fantastic and want to give people your best in everything, every single day. You'll get sick, there'll be other things come up, bad news, things like that. People will forget to show up for appointments as well because they'll be busy. They'll have something come up for them as well that will take them away and totally grab their focus away from coming to that appointment. You'll have to deal with people or clients who run late and then that makes you late and then rolling onto that lateness throughout the rest of the day so meaning you might have to miss out on an appointment or cut someone short or something like that as well as you know finishing later than you originally planned you can run out of supplies like there's been a few times where I've been really really close to running out of oil on a massage or during a massage luckily I have contingency plans in place there where I've got more oil bottles and with different styles of oil that I can use if I come to that. But that came from learning and experience from that, where I was almost out, so I was like, got to get that there. Now, these things will make you question why you started this, why are you doing this, why are you struggling when you could, you know, just have a job, have that security, do all that thing. But these are temporary. If you push, if you can make it past that first five years, you're in. You're done. You're, 
you've beaten, say, 80% of people who start a business. Your reaction to how you handle those bad days will go a long way towards how you handle everything else that the business life or life in general can throw at you. Do you chuck a bit of a tantrum? Are you going to let it influence your behavior when you see those clients? Being, oh geez, I've had a bad day. Who, who wants to go see someone who's grumpy, not focused, like my camera, and just not there for them? They're coming to you with that issue, so you have to give everything you can to them. Because you are the healthy, happy professional. You are professional now that you're in your own business. If you're all caught up in your own drama, how can you do that? So you have to learn to be able to roll with the punches a little bit. Next one that follows is somewhat negative. <sighs> it's a paperwork sucks. There are going to be unnecessary parts of the job, well, necessary parts of the job that you dislike. Being paperwork one of them. So especially if you're a massage therapist and you have association backing and need that accreditation to keep that up so you can give health fund rebates and all that sort of thing like we have in Australia. I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but in Australia, that's the go. You have an association thing, you get your insurance cheaper through them, you get uh, private health rebates from them, so for extras and stuff like that, but you need to keep the paperwork done. And it's also a great reminder of like when that person next comes to see you, what you've done, what has been done, how they're going, their personal history and stuff as well, so you don't do something that would harm them. But it sucks. And the more you put it off, the more it grows, and the more it grows, the more it's just this burden weighing down on your shoulders. Now, following on from that, the next is balancing. Having a business is a balancing act. Do you just throw yourself 100% into the business, but your family will suffer? Social life will suffer. Sports, fitness, your health will suffer if you just focus 100% on that. But you do need to, especially in the startup stages, be very present in the business. Because how can you make money without the clients if you're not there to actually see the clients? But on top of that as well, you could be the marketer, the accountant, the cleaner. All these sort of jobs that happen in there while you're starting up. Because you can't hire people for that. So you're also the receptionist. You're taking the bookings, making the bookings, reminding people, whatever else it is. It takes up time in your day. Where else do you get that time back? But you can't. But the thing is, if you build it and all goes well, it pays off. And then you can hire people down the track. You can get booking systems, software and stuff where people can book themselves in and they can take your notes and your paperwork as well. So that's another way to deal with the paperwork bit is to have it online. So it's always there wherever you are and you can always work on it. There's been times where I've been in a vehicle just on my mobile phone doing client files after a day. And it works for me. Some people, older people, maybe not because technology is scary. And the thing is with all these other jobs too, if you're seeing people for more than likely an hour at a time, it you very quickly run out of time during the day to be able to get those other jobs done. So you'll have to take the accounting home, you'll have to do the cleaning when there's no one there or when you're free. Or if you're in another clinic situation, yeah, when everybody's gone home. So whether that be on a weekend if you have a day off, or after hours or before hours. So you have to juggle all of this stuff. And when I clean down at the clinic, I don't particularly feel like cleaning when I get home either. So the housework at home, my home life might start to fall apart a little bit. But it all comes with that art of balance. Learning how to balance Home life, work life, social life, sports, everything else becomes that juggle. But it is fun, it is rewarding when you do something and it succeeds and you have a fantastic day, it makes up for a slew of bad days where you didn't get everything quite done. Which is why, if the main takeaway from this is you need balance before you burn yourself out. Then we have working with family. A bit of backstory here, so my mum started her business years before I actually started mine or went into this health field, and she was doing quite well. Um, got to a stage where we started to work together. Now, 
for reference as well, it had always just been my mum and I. She left an abusive marriage when I was eight months old and took me with her, but well really, there was no choice, my dad didn't really want me, but that's a whole nother thing. Anyway, so she packed up, moved three hours away, uh, and with her aging mother that she had to care for as well. And we've just always been us since her mum passed away when I was quite young as well. So she started her business and then eventually when I got into it as well, which was just a whole magic turn of events, we started working out of the same building. Two separate businesses where we'd be splitting rent, splitting phone bills, splitting all this. So I thought, why don't we just join forces and then we've got a combined buying power. It's easier for us to do stuff and like if we want another place, we've got an established business just under one thing where we can go to and it looks better on paper because we're earning more those sort of things. But then it created an interesting power dynamic. So mum always knows best because it's that old person like I'm your mother, you listen to me sort of thing. And for me to get in there and get my point across can sometimes be pretty hard. So there are days where you know we just want to rip each other's throats out spit on the corpse afterwards sort of thing. But I'm very fortunate. Myself and my mum are both very reasonable people and it hardly comes to that. Whereas I know there's a lot of other families who would just absolutely tear themselves apart, like quite literally, if they were to work together. So I am very, very, very fortunate in that my mum's not like that. And most of the time it runs smoothly. We have a lot of fun doing this, going away for courses and stuff together, meeting new people and helping those people and improving the quality of their lives, which is so satisfying, which is a whole reason that probably you as well, if you're watching this video, got into that as well. And to, if you fight at work, it probably will spill over into your real life. Because how can't it? If you have animosity to an employee, now, you know, normally you take that grudge with you and you'll see them the next day and you still get that grudge, but you get to escape. Here, maybe not so much, especially if you are still living with that family member. And, yeah, most of the time, it's not an issue for me, though, but it's just something that's like, that would have been good to know or good to have listened to as well from some people. Then, somewhat similar topic. Uh, in the way the power dynamic of the I'm older so I know better style of thinking is to accept all advice. You don't know everything about business. I don't know everything about business. Business people don't know everything about business because there's so many different strains, different things, different niches, different markets, all that sort of thing that you can't possibly keep up in that short term sort of thing. So people will see things from a different perspective and it deserves respect that opinion because you can't see it but their thing might be right now it may not suit your business but take it on board do what you will with it see if it fits if it doesn't say oh thanks for the advice but I decided to go this way sort of thing everybody deserves to be listened to in that unless it's a completely batshit crazy idea that serves no purpose at all but to siphon money from your business then maybe just leave that one to the side thanks but no thanks even all of these gurus, there are, will be plenty of gurus out there that say, here's 17 bloody ways to gain more clients. Are you doing enough to gain more clients? And all that crap. Now, the thing is, some of this stuff really does work. It really does. Like, you need a niche, you need a funnel, you need this and that sort of thing. But I've seen everybody else as well, well, not everybody else, I've seen some certain practitioners go ahead and just do the exact opposite and it works out smashingly for them because they're breaking a new mold sort of thing. Something that, well, no one's thought of or done. So take that advice, work with it, work out whether it's for you or not, and the, early, the earlier the better that you can do that and you'll have more success with that and waste less time. But hey, it's your business, you do what you want with it. Now, another one, don't spread yourself too thin. Now, this comes back to the balancing one as well. Now, last year I was doing lots for my business. 2019 was a bad year for me personally. 
in that my health suffered and everything else. I was just run off my feet. Every weekend I'd be away, mostly for business. I didn't have a holiday, I don't think. Not that I can remember anyway. And I'd come home and I'd just want to sleep or just be by myself and just do other things as well. I was doing a lot. So I'd work in the business and then maybe I'd go and teach martial arts at the night or my other part-time job as well. And it just wasn't working. I was, you know, out of the house from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, hardly getting anything done. Weekends weren't really weekends. You know, maybe I'd get back late Sunday, so 6 p.m. or even later. So the things I was getting little roll over time, rest, recuperation time, like even ironing bloody clothes and stuff for work was getting pushed to the side. I could hardly think straight. And then it started to flow into my business, like giving substandard treatments, just rinse and repeat, do this, do that, do you feel better, yeah, a little bit cool, here's, pay me, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks, sort of thing. And I was losing my passion for it very, very quickly. It's like, why am I flogging the hell out of myself? Doing all of these different modalities as well. So, don't be the jack of all trades, but master of none. Master one, master two, and then once you get really confident and they become automatic, you can just do those and deliver a fantastic treatment straight off the bat. Start to explore other areas or other little bits and pieces that you can add in to add more value to your clients. But don't do it all at once because it will crush you. Or it did for me anyway. Maybe you can handle it. But hey, like I wasn't even thinking straight about anything in any aspect of my life. My relationship was suffering. So relationships, should I say, were suffering. Work was suffering. Health was suffering. Don't spread yourself too thin. And then speaking of not thinking straight, there are going to be so many little things that you need to do to keep on top of, like filling up oil bottles for me, the cleaning, the accounting, the bills, all of that stuff. While booking in clients, rescheduling appointments if someone needs to cancel that there and move that there and do that and all the paperwork and just even taking the garbage out sort of thing, that you will forget stuff. So be easy on yourself in that. With all of that said, even though it seems like I'm just complaining about it, it's just a little warning. Don't think that if you're starting a new business, it's going to be all smooth sailing. If you did think that anyway, you'd be silly. Just a big old silly billy. But it is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I could not imagine myself actually doing anything else other than what I'm doing right now. I'm helping people. It is my passion once again. Taking some time off really helped re-establish my love for this job. And I came back with vengeance. I started delivering fantastic treatments, if I do say so myself. But just learning little bits more, seeing how other people do it rather than just going, being weighed down from my head. That sort of feeling of like, my brain's just too heavy, I can't think. So reprioritizing, cutting away some of the excess stuff, maybe just taking a little bit more time for myself even, as well to focus on my health. Because when I'm healthier, I think that. But that's just some things I've found out. At the end of the day, I love it. I still love it, and I will continue to love it. Take these little hints, take these little tips, look at what works for you, what doesn't, what can you automate, what can you get someone else to do maybe, what can you do to support yourself during that initial startup. But anyway guys, that's it for this one, hope you got something out of it. It's been a fun journey, and at times very very frustrating, at times I've just wanted to go, that's it, doors closed, get the hell out. I'm done, I'm going back to stacking shelves or some mindless job where I've got a little bit of security. Because the thing is too, this could all end in a day. I don't know. It's one of those things where you have to play it as it comes. Take each day as it comes. And don't count your chickens before they hatch because you can have seven people and six cancel. But enjoy the ride if you're on this journey. But anyway guys, if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. I'm Rob Murphy and I'll see you in the next video.